In this lesson, we're going to recreate this page using the CSS block objects that are installed in GoLive CS2 in the objects palette. These are brand new objects, really, really neat stuff, and allows you to create entirely cascading style sheet based web designs for your pages. We're going to start out by taking a look at the different objects that are in here. The first one is a three column scaling center object. And the one down here on the right is a padded box. And we're going to be using these two objects to build out our page. So we'll start by dragging the padded box object onto the page. Now I'm going to need to open up my inspector palette in order to set some of the basic attributes of this object. So let's choose window and then inspector if you don't already have it chosen. And here it is. Now, the first thing you need to do every time you use one of these objects is to give it an ID. GoLive will generate an ID for you automatically, but it's generally not something you want to keep because it's not very intuitive when you're using the objects to know which object is which by this machine-generated ID. So we will come in here and change the ID on this box to banner. Now, in this case, we don't really need the padding on this box, so we're going to take it away. Here, where it says padding, we're going to go over to the pop-up list and select unchanged. And you'll notice right away the padding disappeared from that object. Next, we'll change the height of this object to 60 pixels. So select the 100 and type over it 60. And we can leave the width at 100%. Now let's go ahead and open up the style sheet for this page. And I can see that I have some new entries here in the definitions window. And we can see there are two items here, even though we only placed one on the page. So let me explain to you why that happens. Every one of these block objects is going to have a definition for the whole entire box, and then another definition for each of the boxes that are inside of it. So for example, this one here, which has three columns, will actually have four entries one defining the outer perimeter, and three defining each of the individual columns. So we're going to go into the CSS editor now and change some of the attributes on these objects. So we're going to choose padded box container underscore banner right here, and we're going to change the alignment of it by going into the text properties and choosing center from the text alignment. This way, everything that's in that box will be centered, and that's exactly what we want. Next, we'll change the color of its background. So we'll go to the background properties area by clicking on it there. And I could choose a color from the color well here, but I really want to use my own swatch palette that I created in Photoshop. And the neat thing about Creative Suite 2 is that the swatch palettes are shareable between all of the applications. So let me go over and get my swatches palette, which is right here, and bring it out. And I'm going to use the flyout menu, or what we call the palette menu, and select Open Swatch Library. And all the way down at the bottom here is one called Other Library. So let me select that. And we'll go find a document called .aco. And that's a color swatch. Select the swatch and then click Open. OK, now I can take this swatch palette and dock it in here with my other swatch palette. And I'll move it down here so we can see. Now to use one of the colors, I'm going to activate the color well by clicking on it. And you'll notice that I can now simply click on the color that I want, and it fills up the color well. It's also showing me in the inspector a preview of how the color is going to look applied to this item, and the page itself has also updated.